Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. We're going to jump right into this. This is the first video of 2023, and we're going to go right now. Now, the first thing I want to address are my interview segments with Altcoin Daily uh, that finally published. We recorded these a little while ago, and uh, <clears throat> they're 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 doing very well. I mean, Altcoin Daily is a powerhouse of a channel on YouTube uh, with a, a couple of great guys that that run it. And I was looking through some of the comments of, of these segments last night. So the first of which being uh, kind of a, a nine minute teaser of the full interview and uh, 64,000 views uh, on this one 20 hours ago. And then this one's at 54,000. So, and you know, I basically just shared my thoughts and opinions and I, I was seeing a lot of comments to the effect of, you know, that I was being paid to, to speak so highly. And I was looking through a lot of the comments and I was honestly blown away as to the number of negative Cardano FUD comments there were. And, I, and, and it really made me kind of wonder like, are these Dogecoin holders or like what, who are these people? And how, how could they possibly think the way they do about Cardano? Really took me by surprise, but it did kind of open my eyes up a little bit to how drastically different the, the communities and the comments are in different channels and, and the kind of the, the mentalities of, of, of people. And listen, to each their own, uh, you know, th there are a lot of people that just don't like Cardano for whatever reason. Uh, and, and, you know, I tend to suspect that a lot of these people are just ultimately victims of a lot of the uh, orchestrated FUD uh, associated against Cardano basically put out by other projects and things and 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 you know one of the one of these kind of narratives or one of these efforts we're going to touch on uh today now this video is by the bitcoin express and i just caught this video uh today as a matter of fact and this video is really really good i actually saved this video in my own channel as like a video from you know basically things to learn from other people and i added it to my cardano playlist because i thought this was a really important and very valuable video and this gentleman basically goes on to to call how masari now i've been a customer of masari.io for years now and i've been very just kind of crappy and I and I don't use it nearly as much. I actually canceled for a while as my own little personal boycott because through the years they it, it has been almost as though they have intentionally kept Cardano out of the conversation in crypto. And it doesn't matter how big it's gotten, it doesn't matter what position in market cap it's received, it doesn't matter what's been happening. It has just been intentionally kept out. And, and you know, this gentleman, Bitcoin Express, basically pointed that fact out and, you know, showed clips of, uh, you know, people basically asking, you know, the CEO of, of Basari, like, why no Cardano? Like, what's going on? And he's like, I just haven't spent a lot of time researching it. It's like okay, that's a that's bunk. I mean, let's face it. If you're if you're researching the cryptocurrency, you're you're meaning to tell me that you research Dogecoin more than Cardano, like a legitimate layer one. Get get out of here with that. I think there's more to it, and we've seen how a lot of this narrative unfolds. And I've basically said many many times, money talks. Okay, when it comes to the crypto space, money talks, and so do the bags that people hold. And, you know, in this instance, this video is just very well worth watching because he goes in to uh, the report. So this was published December 27th. This is the first time I'm pretty sure that Masari.io has really gone into Cardano. And they do this very unbiased, uh, factually based report that I encourage everyone to read. I will link it in the description below. And it goes into everything, and it, it it goes into the I mean honestly quite a, quite a, everything. It's very well worthwhile reading. 
and then you know it, by the time you get to the bottom and this thing shares so much information and honestly it's a beautiful piece i mean it's all a very well done factual piece showing on-chain metrics and real statistics this isn't about opinion this isn't somebody saying i like cardano because this is just a very much like here's where they started here's where they've been here's what they've done here's where they are here's all the numbers to prove it and yet by the time you get to the very bottom it basically displays this report was commissioned by the Cardano Foundation. Now, here's the thing. I highly encourage you to read this because it is actually a really well done piece. But ultimately, it appears the Cardano Foundation, in order to find, order to find so-called fair play on Masari, they had to sponsor it. I mean, they basically had to pay for the time. For whatever reason, the team associated with Masari have no interest in putting time in Cardano. Yet, they've done reports on every crap token I can think of. But finally, Cardano Foundation, which we all know Cardano is not one to spend a bunch of money on marketing uh, because they're letting the technology speak for itself. And people like myself and other YouTubers now the world over who've grown to really love and appreciate Cardano for what it's doing, you know, basically not being swayed by its more slow grow approach to basically doing things properly from Jump Street and, and not, you know, basically throwing a bunch of crap to the wall, seeing what sticks and then patching the holes in a sinking ship later like we see with so many other blockchains out there and so you know it, be that as it may uh I, I thought that the piece was really well done i would love to know how much cardano foundation had to pay to get this report uh done now and i'm not even saying that time isn't worth money i do the same thing companies come to me and they're like hey what does it cost to get on your channel and i'm like listen this is this is what it costs right now based off of where we're at in the market and i don't do any research on a project until it's been paid and you'd get my my opinion um and in, in you know in real time with everyone else while i'm establishing it and i call it how i see it so you know i probably should take a bit of a different approach uh but I feel like, you know, it's easier to do if I'm going to put in the time, like a lot of companies, they want me to go read our white paper, spend all these hours and then tell us if you like us or not. And then maybe we'll talk. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have the time for that. If your project is, is if you're willing to hang your project's reputation in my hands based off my personal opinion and the merits of your project and the work done, you should have no problem with the way I operate. If you want things done in any other way, well, then, you know, go to somebody who really doesn't care care preferably somebody outside of the u.s who has no problem basically taking your money selling your shit coin to their audience and pumping it up and just doing all of the things that i've seen time and time again so anyway it, and, and you know when we look at you know some of the metrics associated i forgot this is sentiment.com uh and it is such a good resource for on-chain metrics and all sorts of information and I completely forgot that I had a pro account on this website. And so and I was like looking again and uh, let me see here. What were the, so active addresses, the number of active addresses on Cardano. And this is just to basically show you how there are basically 1.13 million active addresses, active being active within the last 30 days. So all these addresses are basically doing a whole bunch of stuff on Cardano. It looks like a lot of them are trading NFTs. You can see NFT volume. Uh, this was back December 30th. Um, 1.8 million total NFT trades in volume in USD. And that's, you know, listen, this is all just getting started. I mean, Cardano, in my opinion, is, is finally just getting to a point where it can start to play ball but play ball with all of the other uh, layer ones out there, the different block blockchains and play ball with superior tech. And the best is still yet to come. And I see a lot of these people, they're trying to FUD it. Oh, Cardano's not gonna do anything in this market. I've seen the, I've seen the same comments, even if I look at the altcoin daily uh, comments, which I love those guys and I'm so grateful for them giving me the opportunity to speak my voice. Uh, share my opinion on Cardano and, you know, the comments, I mean, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but when I, I was reading a lot of that stuff and I'm just thinking to myself, are these people really this, like, do they really not understand? Do they, are they just completely oblivious to what's 
happened with Cardano and, and like where it's at now and what it's doing, or are they just kind of regurgitating things they read like years ago and then just kind of gave up even trying to learn more because they're too busy trying to pump Solana bags? Like what exactly is it with that mentality? Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. But I think if you dive in and you really look at what Cardano's doing, yes, we're in a bear market. Yes, I see potentially a solid 95% retrace from the most recent peak in Cardano's price. That's gonna take us into the teens. I'm waiting for that. I have a good friend of mine who watches all these videos. Hi, Mike. Uh, and and you know, he's always messaging me, hey, when is a good time? Should I buy in now? Should I buy in now? And I'm like, listen, I'm being patient because there's too much going on in the world right now. Now that, that that's leaving things in a in a state of further decline. Okay, is the easiest way to say it. And I'm patiently waiting uh, for what I think is going to be the 20, uh, 2023 bottom. This is going to be the year of the bottom. I'm quite confident in that. But how low do we go? I don't know yet. I do see us getting into uh, the teens uh, in terms of Cardano's price, and I'm sure we're probably going to see a three figure Ethereum at some point. So on. So. Be that out as it may, I think we're also getting ready to boom. I mean, I think we're the technology and and all of these major companies are doing so many things in the space right now uh, in this bear market, and they're preparing. Okay, these companies are preparing. Date published. This is a patent. We're going to go over just a small handful of patents to give you guys an idea as to what companies are doing what. This is a Bank of America patent. The system and method for leveraging distributed register technology to monitor, track, and recommend utilization of resources. This is a patent. You can go into it. I highly encourage all of you who are bored and you want to understand what big tech, big finance, all these major corporations, um, Visa, okay, I've got patents from Visa, Wells Fargo, an attorney from Florida actually sent me this stuff and he's like, hey, take a look, I was doing some digging and I'm like, I don't know why I never thought of this. And um, so I'm showing his stuff. I, you know, typically when somebody sends me something, I would love to credit him and be like, hey, you know, this lawyer from Florida, he sent me, but I don't know if he wants to be, you know, talked about. So, um, you know, if you ever send me something cool and I happen to actually trust you, because I, I did a little digging, I'm like, he is legitimate, because uh, I never open things that people email me <laughs> and I don't click links that are emailed to me from people I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, he, he seemed pretty legit, even though he needed some work on his website, I will say that. Uh, but anyway, I was I was grateful to see this and it opened my eyes because this is something that I never really considered diving into before. Systems and methods for creating multiple records based on orders, smart contract, uh, ordered smart contract. This is from Visa. This is just one. I mean, there's so many patents, it's crazy. Here's a Wells Fargo. <clears throat> metadata management through blockchain technology what 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 sort of technology would wells fargo be wanting to track metadata for on a blockchain i don't know i wonder uh well they're also one of the biggest mor mortgage holders in the country i mean for those of you that you know um zero knowledge proof based virtual cards this is from amex american express is doing crypto patents at&t System and method for securing allocation of network functions for session slices. I mean, there is so much stuff. And if you just, you want to go and you want to just do some digging, just go to the patent office website and punch in blockchain, punch in Cardano, punch in, you know, cryptocurrency, just and see what companies are doing what. All of these companies, this is 1229. These are all basically around the same time frame. I mean, very recent, 1227. This is basically a week's worth of, of crypto blockchain related patents from five of the biggest companies in the US. Are they bullish on the technology? Do we, do we, you know, some people are, oh, well, we're never gonna go up again. I remember this reminds me of a conversation. I just saw this gentleman this past weekend, as a matter of fact, and, um, you know, I don't give him a hard time, but you know, he was swearing to me up and down back when Bitcoin was around four grand, trying to tell me Bitcoin was never gonna go back to 8,000. It was never gonna get that high again. It was a once in a lifetime fluke and all this other stuff. And I'm like, dude, you don't know me. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I do. I know so much more about this than you're ever gonna read in one of your bullshit articles. So just trust me on my word. No, I, I know it's, I'll bet you anything. I, I'm like, I'll bet you a Bitcoin. It goes not only above 8,000, but probably 
probably triple that. And and sure enough, he's, he bet me. I, I never saw my Bitcoin and I've never even bothered to ask him about it because, you know, he, he while I was making money off of my own knowledge, he was losing the opportunity based off of what he thought he knew. And, and I see so much of that going on to this very day, market cycle after market cycle. I see this, these, these people the world over butting the market because they're, they've lost money. They bought in at the high, they're latecomers. They didn't educate themselves. They're obviously not following me or they would know better. And then you give them the information. You try to explain things with a history of, of, you know, accomplishment, accurate calls, all sorts of stuff. Now I'm always right. Sometimes I'm not right about everything all the time, but I'm historically a lot more accurate than, than, than I am not. And, and I, you know, it, it is what it is, but you know, ultimately the sentiment is we're going to continue going down for a little while and, and the, the macro environment and everything going on in the world is going to continue driving prices even lower because there is a reset happening. There's a lot happening across all markets, whether it's real estate, traditional stocks, you know, you look at the traditional stock markets and you see the prices going down. And then you see, you know, Larry Fink of, of BlackRock basically saying, you know, traditional markets are going to be tokenized. And I've been saying this for years, have I not? There's so many predictions that I've made years ago when a lot of this stuff first started to click with me. And I've been sharing that stuff publicly at will. And, you know, so many people want to tell me, oh, I'm either fudding or I'm, I'm full of it or things are never. And it's like, listen, I'm always right sometimes. Just pay attention. Just open your eyes. Take a look. It's in a book. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, that's it for today. I want to keep this video short. It is Monday. I got work to do, and I just wanted to share this stuff, share some information. Again, I wanted to thank um, Allcoin Daily for having me on. I know uh, Metaverse Mona has got a video coming out. I did with her, with her recently, and uh, looking forward to seeing that. Such a great person. She's really a fanatic about the space, and, and we're going to be working together, I think, on some projects here soon. And, uh, yeah, I'm going back to work on uh, Wargrum, my... my uh, um, Cardano based tactical game and I'm um, just couldn't working out art working on art while my developers are working on giving me a new build with all of the new assets and showing me the new UI and all kinds of stuff I can't wait to show it off uh, but until next time guys grow your coins and I'll see you soon have a good day